going to have a little schematic, okay, of what we're dealing with. Where are we going to have <coughs> here a movement that's going to be the input or the drive? You don't have to rewrite this if you have it already. And here might be different, but you're going to have the output or response. Okay. So, um, and again here I'm not going to rewrite all of this, but you need to understand that what happens here is that we have a continuous okay, input vibration that create the vibration of our product. Uh, our product sits again on a spring or a cushion. That cushion is there, remember, to protect against shock. Usually, we're going to talk about shock later. But the thing is, that cushion basically has a big influence on what will be the movement of your product, its maximum acceleration when exposed to vibration. It's tied together. Okay. So uh, the input vibration occurs, and these are very important terms, okay, at a forced frequency. And this we're going to write as F sub F, okay, with a specified Amplitude and acceleration. This thing is dying down. It's at some point if it's too pale and you cannot read, let me know. I'll have to change. Okay. Okay. So I guess here we might not be able to. We are interested. in the resulting or output vibration. Vibration and its corresponding amplitude and acceleration. Okay, so input, let's drive the motion. Output is the vibration of the package, okay, or the product, if you want, not the package, but the product. So, That's good. Okay. So from empirical uh, and from empirical investigation and mathematical analysis. Three following statements can be made. And I'll have you time to catch up, okay, because these statements are really simple. If you understand them, you're golden, okay? If there's confusion and you don't get those states, okay, you're going to be in trouble, okay? But I'm telling you, it's really simple, okay? Maybe I should not say that, but some students don't like when I think some of them will realize this. Uh, but it's relatively simple compared to other things. So, first thing. The output vibration at 
same frequency as the input vibration. We want everything vibrates at the force frequency. Yes. What if the input frequency is really, really small? Like, say you have a huge mass and the spring constant is, like, ridiculously big. What if it's, like, you put in, like, a really small frequency and it doesn't do anything? Uh, really large frequency, right? No, I'm talking about really, what if it's really small? Because the thing we're you gonna said... We're going to see what's going to happen, but everything vibrates, will vibrate at the same thing. Okay. Okay. So... To the output amplitude is directly proportional to input amplitude. So, obviously, you understand that O is output, I is input. This guy here, M, what's called the magnification factor. We talk about it quite a lot today. Actually, we can say it's like almost just two statements because um, the last one is almost the same. Okay, what you have to do, okay. Here is to replace amplitude with acceleration. Okay? So the output acceleration blah, 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 is directly proportional to the input acceleration. Okay? Statement two. Okay. Yes, sorry. Yes, it will be. That's where we're going. Magnification factor. So M, okay, is basically corresponding to the vibration output over the vibration input, okay? By definition, for what we're going to be doing here, it's equal to that guy. 1 divided by 1 minus the force frequency over the natural frequency squared. And as was just pointed out, this is equal to output amplitude over 
input amplitude and also equal to the output acceleration over the input acceleration. Okay, so again, I just want to let you know, we wrote these things a few times. It is your job to know that this is amplitude, okay? This stands for output, this stands for input, okay? And these guys here are acceleration, okay? Output, input, okay? So, I'm not asking you to remember a lot of things, but this you need to know, okay? Uh, what these variables are. Um, okay, good time to catch up a little bit. So, pretty straightforward. What we agree, or hopefully we agree on here, is that if we impose a forcing vibration to our system. And right here, we also assume we neglect dampening and everything. We're going step by step, okay? So what we're doing, we're putting a vibration. Right now, we're, look, we're not looking at random vibration. We're imposing like a sine wave, thing, okay? Sine wave vibration. So what we, what we are establishing now is that, okay, so whatever frequency is forcing the motion, the product is going to vibrate at that same frequency, okay? Now, we want to know the acceleration and the amplitude. These, okay, are going to be proportional. So output is going to be directly proportional to input for amplitude and acceleration. And the link between the output and the input is that factor M, which is called the magnification factor. Now, this thing, what does it look like, okay? So... If we were to plot that equation, so magnification factor as a function of that ratio, force frequency over natural frequency. So what will it look like? So initially, if the force frequency is way smaller than the natural frequency, so this goes to zero, the magnification factor is one. One. Very good. Okay. So, one. So, progressively, when that thing increases, okay, so you will be dividing, okay, by a smaller and smaller positive number, okay, until this guy, this guy here reach one, okay? So, when that thing is equal to one, okay, what's happening in here is you're going to divide by zero. Okay, so it's going to be a, the function is not going to be defined at this point. Okay, so what it looks like is going to look something, we have an ascent up here, it looks something like this. Okay, so right after this, now if your force frequency passes the natural frequency, you're going to divide here by a very, very small number, but it's going to be negative, right? So, theoretically, you're going to have something that looks like this. Is that tangent? That's the formula for tangent? No, tangent is like periodic. So, it looks something like this. Typically, what we want to do, okay, is represent it as an absolute value, okay? So... Draw this. You can do this on the same graph, okay? If you want. So now it's not just doing a graph for the sake of doing a graph, okay, I'm going to talk about it here and explain a few things. So in here, okay, if you're in that zone, actually, use this one, 
if you are here, so if the, the force frequency is smaller than natural frequency, you have a magnification factor that is larger than zero. Okay? And in this case, okay, you have it's called you are in phase. Okay, that means that the forcing motion is with the output for motion. So that means in this phase here, if you have the product here, if this thing goes up, this thing goes up too. Okay, they go in the same direction. Now, if you are in here, if the forcing motion, the forcing frequency is larger than the natural frequency, you have a magnification factor that is smaller than zero, negative, and you are out of phase. And in this region here, sorry, this is, should be a spring. means if this guy goes up, this guy here goes down, okay? They're moving in opposite direction. So, what do you think happened at one? What do we, yes? Oh, what are those different arrows mean? Like it's the movement. So if the bottom, the forcing vibration goes up, if you're in phase, the product goes up as well, okay? So in a way, they're both vibrating this way. If you pass this, then you're going to have vibration like this, okay? When this part goes up, this part goes down, okay? So, it's not moving. what is it? Is it not moving? What do you mean it's not moving? At the, the one. No. What is the value of the magnification factor here? Oh, it's natural. Natural. Yeah, so what happened? Yeah. Well, we did at the beginning. Yeah, that's a little bit different, okay? In a way, what you have there, okay, is if you have, let's picture you uh, pushing your little brother on the swing, okay? Is that if you time your push, which is the force frequency, perfectly every time, okay? is going to go higher and higher and higher, right? So that's what happens when you have a forcing motion. If you just pull your little rudder and let it go, it's going to vibrate, it's going to swing at its natural frequency. But now what we're doing is we're pushing perfectly at the same time, okay? So that means here we have a magnification factor that is infinite, okay? It's never going to happen for real. When we have dampening, it's going to be finite, okay? But that means that a very small input results in a very large output, okay? This is what's called resonance, okay? Let me jump here, okay? Right here, okay? This is what we call resonance, okay? And this is where the force frequency is very close or equal to the natural frequency. You don't want this, okay? If it happens, okay, again, you're gonna have, particularly, you can look at this as the product level, so your product is gonna vibrate like crazy, okay? And if you have it at the pallet level, you're gonna have boxes flying up, okay? Um, so, in here, it's when we have, for forcing motion, it's going to vibrate. The product will have a magnification factor of 1. So that means if it goes very slowly, it follows it, right? The same input is equal to the output, okay? So all of this in that region, it's bad, okay? When it starts to be good, where is going to be, where is going to be the region here that we think is a good region for a design of a package? Out of phase. We're out of phase, because this is out of phase and this is bad. On the right, right side. The right after the one. You see here, when the magnification factor, or if that's a loop value, is less than one, that means your cushion actually is absorbing the motion. So you can have a large motion here, okay? It can be very fast, like you were mentioning. 
but all that vibration is absorbed, or most of it is absorbed by the cushion, and this real product is barely moving, okay? Because here, the, out, the input is going to be multiplied by a value that is smaller than 1, so it's going to be reduced in amplitude or in acceleration. Does it make sense? So this guy here, okay, where the magnification factor, or the magnification factor absolute value is equal to 1, or in fact, this is where m is equal to minus 1, this guy here is what's called the isolation point. Okay? So you can show that this happened at square root of 2. How do you show this? Okay, it is basically minus 1 will be equal to 1 over 1 minus that ratio there. If you solve for this, okay, you're going to find that at square root of 2 is going to be equals to 1, okay, or minus 1, and therefore everything past this point should be better, okay? So the thing is, you pick a cushion to protect against shock, okay? It needs to be able to absorb some of that acceleration and actually pass a small amount of acceleration to your product. And the thing, you have to, the thing you have to think about as well when you do something like this and when you, if you were to design a cushion, pick a cushion for a system, is that you need to think of how it's going to react, okay, with, with your product and how it's going to be interacting with the natural frequency of your product and system, okay? Because if you have a spring and mass system that have a natural frequency, very close to a frequency you see during road transportation, for example, you're going to have resonance, okay? And most likely you're going to have damage due to that excessive movement. Does it make sense? So to show you something, put things into, uh, go from equation and graph to a little bit of more visual aspect here, show you that quick video, okay? Actually, it's not that quick, so. uh, So, in here, just think about this. This is different than spring, but it's equivalent. So, if you were to relate, so you're going to see that movement is going to be horizontal, okay? So, which one of these will be the stiffest? If you were to try to shake it this way, which one is going to be the stiffest? Shorter, right? Okay, so that rule represents, okay, a stiff cushion. This is going to represent like a softer cushion, okay? The idea, as you will see, that means that this guy, okay, will be influenced by higher frequency, okay? Remember, the natural frequency, 1 over 2 pi, square root of k over m, okay? The stiffer the cushion, the higher would be natural frequency, okay? So in here... Let's see what's going to happen. So they're starting very slowly. Small amplitude, uh, very low frequency. So you are close to one here. So whatever input you have, the output is exactly the same. Does it make sense? And they're doing what's called a sweep, okay? They're going from low, uh, for low frequency and they're increasing that frequency progressively. <coughs> so you see here, this guy has such a high force fre natural frequency that it still has a low magnification factor closer to 1. And how you detect resonance in the lab is by visual inspection or by sound. Okay. Now you see obviously that third mass, okay, is being more and more influenced, okay, larger and larger output. So now you have resonance, okay. So these guys don't have any problem with this, but now its natural frequency is very close to the force frequency. So you have large output, okay.
Now, as you increase, obviously this guy is going to go through resonance, but for the first mass, the first one that went through resonance, now you are out of phase, okay? And all that vibration at some point is going to be absorbed by the cushion or the spring. Does it make sense? So you will see very little movement here. So in the lab, we have the ability to do that on a pallet scale, but uh, vertically, we have a large uh, vibration table in the packaging lab. So, so look at this one now. See, it's not moving anymore. All of this is absorbed by this. Sorry, oh, yeah. I really didn't realize that. I'm so into it. <laughs> So you get the idea, okay? So that's, at least will help get a, a visualization of what that means physically, okay? So, by the way, there's a bunch of cool video if you look resonance and stuff like this, uh, but you also find like very funny other, let's say funny, but pretty different videos about like, Crystal resonance and stuff like this. That are pretty funny. Um, but you believe in crystals and mystical power. Uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing you start looking and click on a video and another, and <laughs> you lose an alien. But uh, there was some cool, uh, cool experiment done at MIT. There's a uh, this guy doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I guess they have more means than us here. But they have a classroom with a bunch of things they swing. And that would be cool. But um, good. So um, let's see. Let me give you a few things here that might be interesting. So truck, or I should say road. And rail transport, okay. Have dominant frequencies, and that means obviously you need to understand here force frequency. between 3 and 30 hertz. So, this range includes Many package, or if you want, product natural frequencies. So it is a problem. The other thing is this is one stacks of corrugated boxes often resonate between 7 and 12 hertz. 
So this obviously is a range, obviously may vary, okay? This vary in literature. Okay, so you may have different range, but most of the time in that range, lower frequency, okay? That's where you're gonna have a lot of product, and stacks of boxes, that kind of basically enter resonance, which is a problem. Obviously you have components, as we'll see later, uh, within product, like probably that gas chromatograph has a bunch of components that will be very subjected to high frequency natural, they're gonna have, they're gonna be stiffer, okay, they're gonna have natural frequency higher, and then they may be affected. But usually the road transportation, you're gonna get low frequency that are gonna be a problem. Okay, so next step, okay, I passed around some uh, examples, right? So uh, I would like starting working on one. Everybody got one of these, no? So when you arrive late, I know sometimes you're shy and everything, but make a take a look. Usually they're going to be a stack of. Uh, handouts there. Did I miss anyone? Oh, sorry. It just said not to be shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the first one is uh, the sampler, and the second one uh, is really what you're going to get at the exam. Okay, so let's start with the first one, obviously, and then we're going to finish the second problem Friday. So, Example two, okay? So you have a five kilogram product, okay? Of its mass is five kilogram. It's protected by a cushion having a spring constant of 981 newtons per meter. And I promise you at the exam, I'm gonna make a very fun story, okay? More colorful than that, okay? But for the time being, I'm sticking a little bit to a boring statement. So I'm asking, what will be the maximum amplitude, okay, and acceleration experienced by the product, okay? So that means what we are looking is, this is going to be the output, right? Okay, that is the movement of the product is the output. If the product is transported on a vehicle generating a dominant vibration at 2.5 hertz with a maximum acceleration of 0.1 g. Okay, so what we know, okay, is the force vibration as a frequency of 2.5 hertz. You need to understand that whatever creating the movement, okay, that frequency is what is the force frequency. And we know that for this guy, the input acceleration is 0.1 g, or if you want, 0.981 meter second squared. Good, so, have the input acceleration, have the force frequency, have some characteristic of my product here, and I want to find the output. So, what you have to ask yourself is, okay, how do I go from the input to the output? <coughs> yes, Juan. How did you know that they're, I thought they were asking for A max, not A naught. Are they the same? So it, the, the thing is, we assume that these are maximum values, okay? Because, like because these are coming from that equation, if you remember. And what we mentioned is obviously that the amplitude and the acceleration varies with the sign. And what we are after is always the maximum amplitude and maximum acceleration, okay? That we define, okay? Yeah. okay? So it's always gonna be maximum, okay? And the not is not a not, is a O for output, right. okay? So that will be the maximum output and maximum output amplitude and maximum output acceleration. 
So here will be the maximum input acceleration that is given to you. So how do we go from an input to an output? Yes? You need the magnification. Very good. Okay. So to start with this, we will have to calculate the magnification factor that is gone. So to do this, don't worry, I remember it. <laughs> okay. To do this, we need the natural frequency of our system. Okay, That's where I told you that the natural frequency, which is the frequency at which 3D vibrating system vibrates, <coughs> is actually a characteristic of our system. And when I say system, it is the combination of the mass and the cushion, mass and spring. And we need that characteristic to find the magnification factor. So the natural frequency for our system is going to be 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m. Okay? So 1 over 2 pi square root of 981 over 5. If you calculate this, you'll find a natural frequency here of 2.23 hertz. That is not looking good. Okay? What am I saying this? Because our natural frequency is pretty close to the force frequency. So then the magnification factor, if we input the values in here, is going to be 1 divided by 1 minus 2.5 divided by 2.23 squared, and we find a value here of minus 3.89, okay? So, this is out of phase, okay? But it's really high, okay? Basically, we're almost multiplying by 4 any type of input, okay? So, once we know this, okay, you don't have to use the negative sign. If you want to carry the negative sign, it's okay. <coughs> what it tells you is that once the in, if the input vibration is going up, the output is going down. So uh, we're going to finish this uh, Friday. But um, I let you have time to maybe try to work on this and see if you can get the answer. Which I assume that a lot of you will be able to do this. So thank you for your attention, and uh, I will see you Friday, and Friday we'll finish those two problems. Yes. You know what? I went to get it, and I did not pass it around, okay? So let me... <laughs> you don't have to... If, if, I can rem if you can remain seated for a second, I'm just going to go here. Uh, Katie is here, Daria is here, Michael is here, Laura is here, Kurt is here, Tyler is here, Juan is here. David is here, Jessica is here, Robert Collier, Anthony is here, Lauren is here, William, Gabriella is here, Natalia is here, Savannah is here, Alex is here, Joseph is here, Michelle is here, Alejandro, hold on, Alejandro, no. Lindsay is here, Hannah is here, Jenny is here, Purvis, Oriana, John, Ariel is here, she's sick. Daniel, James Wilson, and Calvin is here. Okay, good. That was quick. So if any of you want to retrieve their first homework, I have them here. You're welcome to stop by. Uh, you could in a way, but usually uh, it's not going to be.